When did I get so goddamn respectable? <laughs> you know what? That little guy needs me. That big guy, too. They're lucky, guys. Here's to you. To you, Mama. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you the following special report. By 5 o'clock this morning, the 911 emergency service lines had received more than 1,300 calls, reporting the absence of family members, trusted workers, and business owners. One hour later, the number of calls in the L.A. area has escalated to 12,000. The characteristic that seems to link the disappeared is their Hispanic background. This morning, the California sun came up, just like always. There was no clue. Nothing to make us suspect that the destiny of our state was about to change, perhaps forever. Join us as we explore the perplexing events that are certain to haunt Californians for years to come. A day without a Mexican. Um, I woke up this morning, and my husband was gone. Honey? I don't know where he is. And then I, I walked around and I called his name, and usually if he's up, he's down here, and he wasn't here. And his car's outside, so I don't know where he is. And um, then I turned on the news, and it's, it's all the Mexicans are gone. And my husband's a Mexican. <laughs> he's a musician. He's with a really popular band, and... It's, it's common for him to be gone, but he just doesn't disappear right away. And he always lets me know where he is, and I've been all over the house, and I can't find any sign from him or nothing. I mean, his teeth are even upstairs in the bathroom, and he never would leave the castle. He's not Juan. Even Juan! Juan Perez, my foreman. Ten years. Ten years. Bless his little illegal heart, but he's gone. I said, I don't care whether they're Mexicans in Southern California or not. I just want my normal services to go on. I said, how can I run a business? Send me some Chinese, send me some Japanese, send me some Aussies, some Parsis, anything you got. I, I, I don't understand what is happening. It's, uh, Julia's been like a friend of the family. She's lived with us for years and years. She actually came from Mexico, and she was an illegal alien for a few years until we managed to, to get a green card for her and um, she took care of my children. My children speak, uh, they actually speak Spanish because of Julia, you know what I mean? And, um, and I think this is a punishment. You can see I'm trying to work in this office and there's no one here. My secretary is here but her name isn't Gomez, you know what I'm saying? What is going to happen with my child, you know, I, I cannot go to work, I cannot do anything because I have to stay here. My husband needed a shirt this morning, there were no clean shirts. They were not ironed, and I was trying to iron shirts, and I just don't know how to do it. It's quite upsetting, actually, you know? Well, now what am I going to do? I mean, I have, I have to call up the Toyota dealership, and those pirates, they will, I mean, they will take half your left nut just to look at the friggin' thing. So I call the guy up, and he says, well, I'm sorry, I can't help you. His entire staff is taking a run to the border, and he says he can't help me ends up only Mexicans know how to fix these Japanese cars. So, <laughs> I'm screwed. California itself seems to be suspended, cut off from the rest of the country. All attempts to reach Washington, as well as other cities and countries, have proven unsuccessful. I, no matter where I go on the network, I, all I get is this, this error message, this, this speedy Gonzalez. So we have to go back and we have to study that. We have to see the relationship between downloading and, and Mexicans and, and downloading and, and Latin Americans. Clearly, it's something we've underestimated. On a normal day, it would be peak hour at the San Diego-Tijuana border. But today, the complete absence of activity is chilling. Tijuana itself is covered by a thick fog, making it look as if it too has disappeared. It's been confirmed that all Hispanics have, in fact, for lack of a better word, disappeared from the state of California. All of them. 
my own colleague, John Velasquez, is absent from his post. I can only hope that Johnny will find his way to the studio soon, as should the rest of the people for whom so many grieve. Vicky, the disappearance of Assembly Speaker Cruz Bustamante has left Sacramento speechless. The situation is a little tense right now, but we'd like to let the people know that we're totally in control here in Sacramento and everything is business as usual. A little chaotic, but we're in control. And well, my husband, he was one of the original sponsors of Proposition 187. And I understand, I mean, it, it was a very important career move for him, but um, what about my career? I mean, what, what about my life? This is a disaster. You were waiting for the big one. Everybody in California said the big one was coming. This is it. The core of the economy is gone. It's what we told people was going to happen. These are the people that have been sustaining vast swaths of the economy. Now, I can't believe it. My best friend, Raul Hinojosa, the guy I worked with, we were a team, Abdul and Raul. He's gone. I don't know what happened to him. I can't understand. He would not just pick up and go. Well, obviously, it's very chaotic right now. But, you know, my mom told me once that every problem is sort of like an opportunity in disguise. And we'd certainly like to see it that way. Oh, yes. I know exactly where they are. They're there. Hispanics, Latinos, Mexicans, I mean, they're all Mexicans. Sure, they've got their little towns, you got Guatemala and Puerto Rico, Argentina, but they're Mexicans, right? Speedy Gonzalez, everybody knows, that's why we named him that. He's a great character, great sense of humor, terrific guy, I love it. But he's late. The Mexicans are gone from Los Angeles? God, I, I think it's great. I mean, they couldn't even speak the language. So what's the difference? We had no communication with them. If English is good enough for the Bible, it's good enough for them. I can't just fucking believe this. Sorry, baby, sorry. I count on these people. They're here every time I come here, they're here. Now, all of a sudden, they're not here. Who do they think they are? I don't know. They were like, I mean, I don't pay too much attention because as far as I'm concerned, I live in America and I'm only interested in America, you know? If I wanted to live in Mexico, I'd go live there. You know what I'm saying? This morning, for some reason, I, I got up a little late, wandered down to the restaurant at 6 a.m. No one there. No one. Usually, you know, bus boys bustling about, cleaning, you know. No one. You know, lots of people disappear. They disappear all the time. I know it's a lot of people, but you know, uh, my brother disappeared, you know, he's got, my father disappeared. Well, now, wait a minute. What, I, ha I have a girlfriend, her name is Gabriella. I mean, does she have to go? Because, I mean, she, I grew up with Gabriella, and she's not even really, well, she's Latina, but you can barely tell that she has an accent at all, and she's got green eyes. So what is that? No, 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 I, I really, you know, Gabriella's normal. She is normal, she's just like me. I mean, there's no way that Gabriella, and besides, I mean, well, and Gabriella is the doctor. Fuck! You're trying to tell me that there are no Hispanic sighted anywhere. Come on, what about in the seventh sector up there? Nothing. In the Sonoma County, nothing. What are you talking about? And what are all the agri-crop industries doing up there? Oh, don't give me that, you don't know. Somebody's gotta know. It's funny that throw a gun. Well, that's, that's, uh, wait a minute, because if they disappeared, which is a pretty unbelievable thing, <laughs> we've done our job. Our job is to keep out illegal aliens. So in the big picture, if they've disappeared, and that's pretty hard to believe, we've done our job. I mean, so. <laughs> Little clever bastards are probably just planning something. They're probably just taking a break and planning something to. Yeah. They're always coming up with different things, trying to get into our country. You know, it works. Our fences, the ditches, the helicopters. You know, as a matter of fact, all I can say is uh, that uh, there's a lot of money that's put into this program. And um, obviously, it's work. And I do think it's a question of karma. I do think we deserve this. We, we the people, have done wrong to other people that we should be considering we the people as well. If this is the beginning of the apocalypse, I think we're all gonna die. I think this is just the beginning. The Latinas are first, and then, then the Asians, and then the blacks, and then we're gonna die. 
California, the seventh largest economy in the world, feels like a ghost town. While Hispanics have disappeared, their cars, pets, food, clothing, and other valuables have all been left behind, intact. Could it be that the omens, the prophecies are coming true? Well, if you, yeah, if you remember during the Proposition 187, the governor, Governor Wilson, our governor, said that the Latinos, the immigrants, cost the state $3 billion. Okay, so that was a cost of $3 billion, supposedly, in social services. But nobody bothers to say, but wait a second, what do they contribute? What they contribute, what we said, was $70 billion. So what, $70 billion, take away three, it's still $67 billion in people were giving to the state in goods and services. I mean, that's not very bad. It's like a three-legged stool, I'll tell you. Three-legged stool. In farming, you've got land, you got water, and you got Mexican labor. Without any one of those, you're on your ass, like I am. In, in, in Central Valley, we're just getting the phone calls right now from the Central Valley. There's nobody in the fields. They are looking for people to go and pick the, the, the fruits and vegetables which are rotting today on the fields. They can't get them at $10, $15. That's three or four or five times what people used to get. Nobody will go onto the fields. There was a time you could get any Mexican to do any job for you for one six pack of beer. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I tell you, know, I'm from Bakersfield. I know whereof I speak, because up there, you get a field, right, of like soybeans or, I don't know, cauliflower or whatever, and all you need, you get one six-pack Jose, you put him on one side of that field, and you take six cold ones and put them at the end of the row, and he will pick that row faster than crap will go through a goose. I tell you, it's true. Mm. I have to pay $100 for a crate of lettuce, and not even good lettuce, wilted a week old lettuce. They just keep saying that, that uh, the Latinos are gone, that no one's around to, to help get fruit or, or drive trucks or, or do anything. Have you been to the grocery store lately? Six dollars for a head of lettuce, six dollars. Tomatoes, eight dollars a pound. Now, I'll, you see this? This little pot of land, I'll grow my own veggies. I, that's what I'll do, I'll do it. <laughs> I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't go one more day without a tomato. I mean, there's other things you can eat, but then you gain weight. I had to go somewhere in East LA, like somewhere just east of La Brea. I have this problem with retaining water. I'm trying to keep my figure, and my doctor is gonna take the diuretics away from me if my blood test isn't good, you know, with the potassium level. So I gotta have tomatoes today. When they called me, then I, I left the money. For a 10-day supply, it's about $150. I mean, without the tomatoes, I can't take the diuretic. Without the diuretic, I would be a big, fat pig. I, I, I want to be a supportive wife and a supportive mother, but, but I need support myself. I, I really need... Denora back, because as I see it, well, you want family values, you, you get a housekeeper, you know. There's no way that California could survive. I'll give you a good example. Dan Gonzalez on the O.J. Simpson trial, he got key evidence that wouldn't have been found if it wasn't for him. For example, in the scientific community, we have Ralph Gonzalez, who actually charted the re-entry of the Apollo 13. Now, you probably missed him because he got cut out of the movie. He was the one that found the blood in the Bronco, which was a key element in the trial. I mean, I, I just love Dan. He's a great person. I actually used to go down um, on my lunch and watch him to see if I could see him, and I did several times see him, and I used to wave. I don't know if he saw me, but he was such a warm person. I really liked him, and he was so committed in his work. It was great. It was just great. Can you imagine what happened? De La Hoya signed the fight. Here he comes fighting Whitaker. 
Whitaker shows up, but there's no De La Hoya. <laughs> yeah, well, that'll be that'll be something. I can see Don King now. I can see Bob Arum now. <laughs> no Hispanic fighters. This is a joke, isn't it? You know how they, they have these two volcano movies come at the same time? They'll probably have ten disappearance movies coming right after the other. And we're going to be the first disappearance movie. And what's we, your concept? Well, we have, we have the angle. We have a... Uh, I guess we can... You, you can tell them. I think it's okay. It's, uh, it's Independence Day meets like water for chocolate. I'd like to start on a book immediately explaining this phenomenon. Let's try to get to the bottom of this and figure out where these people have gone. And are they coming back? Disappearance day sale. Think about it. If they're here, we celebrate them. If they don't come back, well, it's a day to remember them. Now, today's a Wednesday. That's a problem. It doesn't matter. Because if you get famous in this country, you can have a sale. You move it to a Friday. You get the three-day weekend. Perfect. You get a magician, Copperfield or somebody, to come in and, and, and have him on a set, and, and he's talking about everything's flying off, flying off the shelves. Come get them while they're hot. Huh? Okay, so what you're saying then is that, that you think that Pete Wilson might have put David Copperfield up to this. Gene, I just want to go on record to say that Pete Wilson did not contract the services of David Copperfield to make all these people disappear, although I'd pay money to see that, but no, that is not the case. Not only has the service sector been paralyzed, but also schools, high finance, as well as the medical, legal, and entertainment fields have come to a standstill. How many thousands of people come to California every day? It's going to replenish. Can I ask you a question? Uh, We're no, actually. No, none of this. I don't want to. Excuse me, sir. Are you Mexican? Do I look like a Mexican? I'm not Mexican. Every day people ask me the same question Do I look like Mexican? Anilo Mexicani. Uh, uh, what, what are you, sir? Where are you from? I'm Israeli. Well, and you... quit asking me these questions. I'm not Mexican. Have I disappeared? Options. Uh, I could always drive a cab, I guess. Well, Mr. De La Fuente, he's a highly respected financier, import-export business, I think. And, uh, well, he really loves life. Traveling, good books, good food. Japanese is his favorite. He's got a great sense of humor. He was always kidding me about my hair, but he doesn't have any. And I think he's pretty powerful. He's very organized, plans ahead, unlike me. There's one thing he hates, is being late. So it's every morning, 7.30, on the dot. But who are these people we lump together and call Hispanics? Are they Mexican-Americans, Chicanos, Central and South Americans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans? All of the above are Hispanics, or Latinos, as some prefer to be called. But whatever the term, whatever their cultural heritage, they are first and foremost people. People who make up one third of the population of the state of California. California is itself a Spanish name, and the state has an undeniable Mexican past. Today, California's vitality and prosperity still rests largely on the shoulders of its Hispanic population, who, at times, have been taken for granted. And since we don't know what we've got till it's gone, their disappearance leaves us to worry and wonder, will they return? For now, we can only wait and hope. Maybe what happened is that the, the governments of Latin America finally decided that they wanted their investments back. You know, the reality of it is immigrants, they were an investment who paid for all their health and education before they came here. Where were they born? They were born in Latin America. Boom, the best and the brightest, where did they go? They went straight to California to hit it big and to work and to provide great benefit for this economy. I am in constant contact ever since this morning with um, a very beautiful spirit named Rolanda Shikanta, Shikanda Renika and she has been uh, conferring with me and telling me exactly what's going on moment to moment, play by play, I know everything. Let me put it to you this way, okay? In order to work on interdimensional travel, the most important part of 
the composition of the human body is the amount of fiber, okay? Now fiber, where you get most fiber is through the consumption of corn and beans. When they disappeared, when they decided to disappear into thin air, well, I can only suspect they, they went to one place. They went back home. As far as getting these people back, I'm not really that interested in getting them back because they've been traveling through this interdimensional time-space continuum. I'm more interested in perhaps setting up some sort of a interdimensional travel agency, as you will. This is my own personal theory, and I've been gathering uh, a lot of evidence. Uh, but um, a very clear and constant pointing to this very special relationship is that they have with other beings, and it is the hat, the sombrero. It's friendly, it's a familiar image, but now you can see for yourself how the shape is clearly a proud, nostalgic, perhaps, rendering of what they once knew, the mothership. The mothership. The mothership. And just this morning, I saw a wanted poster for Jose missing. Call a day without a Mexican. Missing. Jose, missing. Hat. Sombrero. Which led me to an overwhelming discovery that shocks even my scientific rigor to such an extent that I had to try to reduplicate it in my own laboratory. We will take one example. One image of Jose. Mothership. Jose, mothership. I will put them face to face, back to back. Doesn't work. Invert the image. Reverse it. What do we have? Yes, mathematically, you can see the relationship. The ratios are exact. You might think a hat's just a hat. That is clearly not so. We need them. I mean, you know what? Every time the agricop industries need more people, we get the orders from up top to be a little lax on the system. So, oops. I'm going to have to confiscate that because there's information that's coming up. You know. I do think the government was in the know to some extent. I mean, why would they choose to call them aliens? These Latinos. These Mexicans, who would otherwise just be people, were repeatedly, insistently referred to as aliens. Illegals. Illegal aliens. This clearly suggests to me that what bothered the government was not that they were aliens, but that they were not part of the alien community, which already had an exchange agreement with the United States government. The legal aliens, shall we say. An exchange of what, you might ask? The Greys specifically will give us technological know-how and we will give them land in the southwestern United States which used to be Mexico. Let us not forget that. In which they can conduct their abductions and their studies. We can consume mass quantities of corn and beans just like the people in the Southwest who are leading the way into interdimensional travel. And, and perhaps we can all go through and, and break through this, this interdimensional thing out there. Everybody wanted to get the Latinos out. Get them out. But you better believe that these illegal aliens do have the upper hand. California's dream was that it didn't need the Latinos. It needed them. Obviously, once the uh, government realizes that what the illegals had been providing is indispensable. I think they'll scramble to come up with an exchange agreement. I, don't, I hate to say we told you so, but we told you so. California, the golden state, is not shining. After the initial shock, Californians are speaking up loud and clear. The nature of the planet is variety and Every bit of variety that is wiped out uh, is a step backward in, in the process of evolution. Yeah. It's just to disappear, and that they'll be back, and then, you know, it's, 
America needs you, Jose. Dan, if you see this broadcast, wherever you are, please come back. Come back pronto. Listen, come back. Just come back. We're sorry. Okay, we're sorry. You know, it's. Please come back. We're wrong. Yeah. I'm going to miss her. So if you can find it in your heart to forgive the state of California, I ask you, please come back. Robert, I love you. I want you to come home. Um, I don't, I don't care where you've been, I don't care where you are, I don't care what it takes, just please come home to me. I mean, I can't be without you. Was this a warning? Nature's way of forcing us to realize that our destinies are irrevocably intertwined? That our American way of life depends on all of us being here to do our jobs? One thing is certain, what we've learned, or failed to learn, will be evident very soon. Don't you think you'd better be nice? Waiting for him on the board again. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding.